functioning, you're not going to be able to do that when he comes back. Because he's coming back as what? An angelic force to be reckoned with. Okay. So let's get back to business. Second is was 13. Excuse me. Second is was 13. And let's go straight to where was we, where was we? Six. But I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain. The great mountain is referring to a chariot. And a mountain, you cannot see the end of it. Okay? You cannot see the bottom of it. But hold on, you may be able to see the bottom of it, but you cannot see the end of it. You cannot see the width of it. All right? A great mountain. All right? Great himself a great mountain and flew upon it. See, Abishai flew upon this mountain, which was a chariot. See, Abishai is coming back in a chariot, on a chariot. Right? But I would have seen the region or place where the hill was brave and I could not. Because that's how big it was. You could not see the, the, the end of it. Okay. You could see the height, but you could not see the end of it. Okay. What is it? The width. Okay, you could not see the width, you could see the height, but you could not see the width of it. The breadth of it, in better words. This is what Ezra saw. And after this I beheld no day which was gathered together to subdue him was so afraid. And yes, the fight. So it says, the nations, okay, Babylon, Iran, they're going to all come together. Yet, they yes start fight. They were commanded to fight. They were given the order by who? The elites. And by this time, the elites are going to be in their what? Their bunkers. All right? Because remember, these militaries, whose interests are they protecting? They're protecting the elites. They're protecting their interests. All right. That's what you got to understand. But then, yes, they were forced to fight. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude, that came, he neither lifted up his hands, nor held swords, nor any instrument. So we never needed to. Yahushua never needed to. Okay. When you have power, you don't need to have you don't need to hold sword. None of that. Alright? You just command and that command is done. Nor have any instrument of war. But only I saw that he said out of his mouth. As it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he passed out tempest. That's what came out of his mouth. Okay, and that's a manifestation of what the chariots. What are they going to be shooting? Fire, tempest, electricity. All that's going to be mixed in one. And out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempest. So all those mixed into one. What does that create? An explosion. Fire, tempest, sparks, water. Right? They were all mixed together. The blast of fire, the flaming breath and the great tempest, right? And fell with violence upon what? The multitudes, the many, 
which was prepared to fight and burn them up, every one, so that a, a sudden and innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived. So you had an innumerable multitude being burnt, and nothing was to be perceived, nothing at all. So they were burnt beyond ashes, nothing was to be perceived, no bones. And that was the chariots that were doing them. The chariots were burning them up beyond recognition. But only dust. There was only dust there. Nothing but dust. And that's what Yahweh was going to be doing. Zapping people. These chariots are going to be zapping people. It's going to be like a scene of war of the world. When I saw this, I was afraid. So when Ezra saw this, he was very afraid. Wouldn't you be afraid if you saw the same thing in a vision? Yeah, he was afraid. He saw this. He saw the innumerable multitude. He saw these things happening. Afterwards, so I came. A man come down from the mountain. Yahweh Shai, come down from what? Them chariots. Amen. And called him another peaceable multitude. Realek. There came much people unto him. Whereof some were glad. So you're going to have some that were glad to see Yahweh Shai, to rejoice in Yahweh Shai. Some were sorry. We read into that in Daniel 12 earlier on. Those that what? Didn't want to get right. That were not of the elect. Some of them are bound. That was referring to those elites the banking families they were bound other some were brought of them that were offered that was speaking about the martyrs but they, they were those that were offered then as i sit through great fear and i awaked and said thou show thy servant these wonders from the beginning and it's counted me worthy that i should receive my prayer so as was he really did thank yeah, I was shy because he was able to see. Okay? The end of destruction. The end of all things. The end of his kingdom. Okay? He was able to see that. He had vision. Alright? He knew what was what was going to happen in the last days. And that's why it says in Matthew 7 and 24, not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of the Most High, of Yahweh Shai, but those that do the will of my Father. That's why you got to seek favor with Yahweh Shai. Okay? That's why you got to seek his favor. So now let's go into Zechariah. Let's see if I can Bear me just a minute. One thing at a time. Yes, Zechariah 14. Behold, the day of the Lord, Jehovah Shai, cometh. So if it's not slowing down, it's coming. You just have to be what? Patient. 
and thus four shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Run, no, 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 bear me this minute. Yep, yep, yep. And the city shall be taken and the house rifled and women ravished. Now this is ancient prophecy, bear me this minute. Verse three. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in a day of battle. So we're done with that. Alright. Now let's get into more of it's going to flow with the spirit. The flow with the spirit. Because the Lord requires that we give all of our effort. Okay, all of our effort, and it's got to the point now where you really got to be focused on yourself. You warn the brothers that I came around you, but you really got to be focused on yourself. Okay, and those that really want to teach this word, those that are not taking the truth seriously, forget about them. Okay, forget about them. All right. Maybe just a minute. Zephaniah, Zephaniah, maybe So I can, there's so many different things you want to get into, but I want to keep it on point. Just a minute. Isaiah eleven. Okay, righteousness shall he judge the poor. Because Yahweh, he's our ultimate judge. Alright. And the proof of equity. Equity goes into fairness. Not judging with um what's what they call it? Not being impartial. For the meat of the earth. the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips which we just read on in Revelations what? Revelations I think it was what 18 or 19 and second was 13 and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked right? And the righteousness shall be the girdle of his lives. This truth. And faithfulness, the girdle, the girdle of his reins, both with righteousness. supplications and he has our voice every single day he has the voice of our supplication and this is our supplication the Lord is my strength the Lord's outside is my strength 
yes, he is our strength. He is our power. Right? I'm my shield. I'm my heart. Trust in him. I am held. Of who? You have a shine. Wherefore my heart greatly rejoices. With my song when I praise him. And this is the song. The Psalms is songs. The Psalms we're singing is the songs. I'm a praise in your house, with the songs. The songs of sacrifice. The Lord, you have a shine, is my strength. And he is the saving strength of his anointed. So, yeah, right. He's the saving strength of his anointed, the hopeful elect. And as I see that, I see 444, yeah, I'm actually to He's the saving strength of his anointed. So he has an anointed upon this earth. Which are known as what? The hopeful elect. Which is going to deliver from this wicked kingdom. Alright? See what else we got. Go to Job 21. And seven. Wherefore do the wicked live, become old? Yeah. Are mighty in power. See yeah, Esau. He does a whole bunch of wickedness and you know, lives out, lives out his age, old days. But we know the end of his kingdoms, and yeah, they become old. Yeah, and are mighty in power. Yeah, their seat is established in their sight with them. So yeah, Esau, his seat's is established. He sets up his what? His seat and so forth. His family, his dynasty. But. Their seed is established in their sight with them. Their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are saved from fear. So Esau is living deliciously. He doesn't have to live in these neighborhoods. I'm talking about the rough Charles, the Rockefellers. They're living good. Their seed is established, let me check the time, before them. Okay, they're living pretty much somewhat good. Okay, they have the old money, they have the inheritance, right? And their offspring before their eyes. Their house is safe from fear. They don't got to worry about nobody running up on them, right? And the rough chance, a lot of them live in, um, what's it? Outside of London, some of them live in London, some of them live outside of London. Okay, Waddison Manor and so forth. And they got their own plot, they got their own fields. They don't got to worry about anybody, they got their own security. Their houses are safe from what? From fear. Okay. They don't have to worry about all that. They're bull generous. And fail if not, they cow calf it, and cause if not a calf. They send forth their little ones like a flock. And they call them dogs. And what does that represent? Being merry. Right? They take the timber and heart, rejoice at the sound of their organ. So they're in a, uh, in a state of mirth. They spend their days in wealth, okay, which is what substance. In the moment, they go down to the grave. So in the moment, they die. Verse 14, therefore they say unto the Most High, depart from us. 
But we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. Esau don't care. You think, what do you think he put cares? Esau don't care about life. He's already condemned. So why is he going to care about you? He was given what? He was not granted any what? Salvation. So if Esau wasn't granted any salvation, he's going to try to take you out. All right? What is the Almighty that we should serve Him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto Him? Right? No, they're good. It's not in their hands. Their counsel, the counsel of the wicked is far from me. So it's our counsel. is far from Yahweh Shai. The Lord ain't, ain't hearkening unto their wicked counsel. It's far from the Lord. It's far from Yahweh Shai. How oft is the candle of the wicked put out? And the candle represents this man's system. What happens when you put a candle out? It's dark. No more light. So the candle of this, which represents the system, is going to be put out completely. Yeah, this candle is going to be snuffed out. How often cometh their destruction upon them? The Most High distributed sorrows in his anger. That's what Yahushua is doing. He's going to distribute, send out what them sorrows in his anger. Many, many sorrows. But a stubble was stubble. Loads of these. So the nation going to be a stubble. All right. That's going to be the end product of this, what? Esau society, Esau's kingdom, stubble. Before the wind. And that's what chaff that the storm carrying for way. So Esau's kingdom is going to be no more. His eyes shall see his destruction. And he shall drink of the wrath of all the, the Almighty. So again, Esau's going to drink down that wrath. He's going to swallow down them dregs. All right? He's going to swallow down them dregs. He's going to drink that wrath. Go to Daniels. This is Daniels two of thirty five. Where was the iron and the clay? And the brass, and the silver, and the gold, and the broken, broken to pieces. And the pain that the chaff of the summer flesh and floors, which is what? The residue. Of what? The flesh and floors. Okay. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. This represents of what? All these kingdoms. Okay. That's why it was said Jehovah Shai had what? Many crowns upon his head. Because even Babylon, Babylon takes on the same customs. That's why America is known as Babylon, because it takes on the same customs as ancient Babylon. Right? It takes on the same customs as Egypt. That's why America is also known as Egypt. It takes on the same customs as Sodom. That's why it's also known as Sodom and Gomorrah. It takes on the same customs as Assyria. It takes on the same customs as Greece. Greece. Right? Because it was practicing, it was taking on what the ideologies 
of what the Persians and all these empires. And they incorporated it in what you see today. That's why when you see what these roads, Rome, you see the buildings, just that road. Okay, you've got Royal Ascot. They were doing the same thing in Rome, the horse racing. History repeats itself. History repeats itself. Nothing has changed. Okay? You had the gladiators. You got that today. You know? The UFC. The boxing. All that was happening in the Roman Empire. It's just that they're Roman, they're Roman gladiators. It's the same thing. Nothing changed. The whole football, the whole Olympics. This is Rome. Nothing has changed. And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smoked the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth which represents the dominion of the 12 tribes of Israel which represents the dominion beginning with Yahweh Shai that's what it represents listen to that's it on that baby just a minute that's it on that Isaiah 6 I think it's 6 and Nine. Go to Isaiah 9. And I hope this is edifying to you that are listening. And repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Get right with Yahweh Shai. Because we ain't got much time. Isaiah 9 and let's start at 5 for every battle of the warrior is conf with confused noise alright shouting, screaming look at that ancient war movies right and garments rolled in blood ok it gets very bloody ok but this shall be with burning and fire. This is referring to the World War Three. This gonna be what? Burning and fire. Okay. You are fire. For unto us a child is born. That child is speaking of Yahweh Shai. Unto us a son is given. Right? And that's speaking of Yahweh Shai. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. What does that mean? He's going to be what? The one that what? To rule Israel. The, government, the head of the government of Israel. That's what it means. The government shall be on his shoulders. Okay? And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty Power, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Right? The Jehovah Shai is known as the Prince of Peace. We're going back to Solomon. What does peace mean? Shalom. And Yahweh Shai is our counselor. He counsels us. Through these words, this word is a counsellor. The mighty power, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. But this government is going to be forever. There's going to be no end to it at all. 
it's going to be a continued thing. Upon the throne of David. That's what it's established on, the throne of David, the house of David. Scriptures tell you that Samuel and Samuels. Okay. From henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So we're done with that, we've established who's going to be the ruler of this government. Yahweh King David, it's lucky, Yahweh, Yahweh King David, the apostles, the Trinonus disciples, and the rest, the 144,000, and the one third. Then you have the two third below. Then you have the other nations. That's how this is going to be set up. Right? And we cannot wait. Okay. And I'm saying that in a, I'm not saying that in a sense that we don't have patience. I'm saying it as we cannot wait in the sense of there's gonna be so much things that to look forward to in the kingdom. So much. So much to look forward to. And this is why we labour. To enter into that rest. The summer you should come what? To fall short of that rest. That's why men they get faint. Because they no longer have vision. They can no longer see the kingdom. So then guess what? They end up fainting. They end up passing out. You have to have that vision. Alright? You have to have that hope. Because without that vision, without that hope, what good is it? Bear me just a minute. Raw. Hey, Satan's getting mad. Yep. Crazy. Hey, good on him. Yep. Raw. Oh, shit. Man. Uh -uh. Yeah. You got people, you got people getting out of cars and attacking each other. That was the third time I see this today. And bear, bear me just a minute. Let's get. Out. It's getting crazy out here. Bear me just a minute. Let's go to Matthew 24. The scripture said these things would happen. Okay. That's why you want that hedge around you. Okay. You want that hedge of protection. Words. Let's go to Matthew 24. The scripture said this would happen. Matthew 24 and quote. And because iniquity shall abound, so iniquity is abounding. Sin is abounding. Yes, man. Yes, man. Right, right. Iniquity is abounding. Sin is abounding. The love of many shall wax cold. For the love of many is waxing cold. You're seeing that, you see people jump out of cars attacking each other. Right? Because the love of men is waxing cold. So that love, that love is, 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 is wavering. Okay? It's not true love. It's not true love. And you're seeing that. Right? The love of many shall wax cold, which means totter, waver. Okay. And that's why, really, this ain't the time to be around too much individuals. Especially in this time, because if a man ain't about this truth, I always say this, he's liable, he's liable to turn on you. <laughs> he's liable to switch up on you, man. You know what I mean? That's why you really got to be convinced in this truth. You've already got to be convinced, scriptures, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind, fully. But this is the truth. This is what you believe in. The love of many show what's cold. Verse 13. 
but he that shall endure unto the end. And yeah, we know, you watch certain videos, um, yeah, it's about patience. So we know, we learn this truth, and we learn about patience. All right? And it's different levels to patience. And it's spiritual, because you may pray for particular things, and you have a show, may what deliver you from particular situations. So if you pray to be delivered from the wicked, to be delivered from evil men, and you're delivered, that's a prayer that was answered. It's not because you did not have any patience, you see? That's why you're going to be spiritual, okay? Oh, that's why that happened. Because I was praying for a particular thing. The Lord answers your prayers, all right? Because guess what? If I didn't have patience, I wouldn't... Yes, if I didn't have patience, I would not I would not, I would not be doing what I'd be doing now. It takes patience to come out here. It takes patience to have to deal with the scoffers, the scorners. It takes patience to suffer in the flesh. It takes patience to reprove your people. All this takes patience. Okay? It's just that there's levels to patience. So with the sermon, you're going to have even more patience. With that discernment. Right? Because with discernment, you're able to see more. So, the higher level of discernment you have, the more patience we've got to have. If that makes sense. Because what? We see more. Okay? And that's, every, that's a thing that every brother needs. Because man would quote, well one to you that have lost patience. But if a man's in drawing, he's not lost patience. You have men in camps, they're in camps but they've lost patience. They're in the camp but they've lost patience. By their attitude towards Yahweh Shai. How they move. Okay? Because you can... You can be fed up of something, but not lose patience. There's a difference. You can be fed up. You can be fed up, but you ain't lost patience. You gotta be careful what you put out about certain brothers. All right? Because you have many camps that they no longer want to do this anymore. They just turn up. And guess what? If you're of the hopeful elect, you're not gonna lose patience. And those, that scripture when it says, woe unto you that have lost patience, that's speaking about those that have what? They got fed up, the proof never happened, you had that in 2000 and what? 12? Those that what? Went what? Right back to the world. You had that in 2000? Those that went right, right back into the world because it wasn't happening in their time. That ain't the mentality I have. The mentality is, no matter what happens, we're going to endure. That's the mentality I have. Okay. Lord's willing. So him that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Which we know, not all of our people are going to, going to do that. Enjoy to the end. Bear me just a minute. All right. See what we got. Verse. Chapter 18. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought to bear just a minute. That men ought to always pray. So we ought to always pray continually. And not to faint. 
So with prayer, Yahweh's just going to keep you what? Going. Through prayer. Through supplication. It's going to keep you going. It's going to keep you strong. It's going to keep you believing. Right? Saying there was a city, in a city, a judge who feared not the Most High. Neither regarded man. So this judge, he did not fear the Most High. But remember, he was a, a judge. You've got to keep that in mind. It's going to tell you the woman that was pleading. Okay? And there was a widow in that city. Okay? A woman whose husband had passed. And she came at him saying, avenge me of my adversary. Okay? And we are that same woman that we want to be avenged of our adversaries. And he would not for a while. So he wouldn't deal with the matter. But afterwards he said within himself, though I fear not, no other God man, no I fear not the most, I know of a God man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her. She was complaining. That's why we're supposed to complain. Give the Lord's heirs no rest, day nor night. Okay? Though he bear, bear me some Let's slack it. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her. Let's by her continue coming. She weary. Right? So the judge is getting the, the woman was getting on that judge's nerves. That's what was happening. So the judge said, you know what? I'm going to judge your matter because you're getting on my nerves. So I'm going to judge your matter. Just so you stop bothering me. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall so not the most high avenge his own and let which cry day and night unto him though he bear long with them see how shall he's going to avenge his hopeful elect that cry day and night unto him he's going to judge their cause continually he's going to judge their cause Bear me just a minute. I tell you, all right? I tell you that he will avenge them, right? Speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find on the earth faith on the earth? So yes, he's going to avenge his hopeful elect. But it says, shall he not find faith on the earth? So he wants to find faith upon this earth when he comes. Those that are going to be what? Acceptable. Right? That's what he wants. Faith. And faith is the substance of what things not seen but heard of. Go to Hebrews. Bear with me just a minute. Hebrews 10. This is an exhortation of what steadfastness. Hebrews 10. And 35. Cast not away therefore your confidence. And to teach his words, it takes a great amount of confidence. And he said, cast not that away. What's our confidence? Is Yahweh Shai? Now how are you going to cast away your confidence that we have in Yahweh Shai? Don't cast that away. This is all we got. Yahweh Shai is all we got. He's our confidence. Right? You can't cast that away. Okay? 
A lot of men, they have casted away their confidence. Can't do that. Okay, stay prayed up. All right? Pray every day. Right? Cast not away your confidence. Okay? And you can't be concerned with those that are threatened by your confidence. Okay? Because this is what you got to understand. People feel threatened by confidence. I'm talking about the confidence in Yahweh Shai. The belief you have in Yahweh Shai. People are threatened by that. I've seen it. You're teaching people, you know, they can't keep their hands, they can't, what's it, they can't keep their hands in one place, you know? They need to act, they need to cross their arms, they're fidgeting, because they're not confident. Okay, don't worry about those that are not confident. Okay, that's their problem. Don't worry about those that don't have confidence towards Yahweh Shai, that's their problem. Okay, focus on your shy and those that have that same confidence, right? Focus on that, right? Which have great recompense of reward. So yes, your confidence in your shy there's a great recompense of reward for that. You standing firm. You standing firm for Yahweh Shai. It's a great recompense for that. Right? For you have need of what? Patience. Right? Allah wants what? Yeah, he wants his man to have patience. In the words. In his truth. Okay. But after you have done all the will of the Most High, ye might receive the promise. After you've done His will, we've received that promise. But yet, a little while, a little, little while, and He that shall come, will come, which is Yahweh Shai, and we're not tarry. So we have confidence, Yahweh Shai is coming. And it says we're not tarry. Are we coming? Just have to be patient. Now the just shall live by faith. So we're starting us know, but just in these times, we're going to live by the faith they have in Yahweh Shai. Then we're going to live by that faith. But, if any man draw back, but in other words, draw him back into this world. You can't draw back. You can't miss your old life. Why would you miss your old life anyway? You were, you were doing wickedness. Why would you want to draw back? Excuse me. <laughs> now, if any man draw back, right? My soul shall have no pleasure in him. So in other words, Yahweh Shai is not going to delight in you. All, all your sacrifice you were doing ain't going to mean anything. <coughs> okay? Excuse me. Okay? It's about the sacrifices. Scriptures say that in Romans 12, offer your body as what? A living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. Right? So every day, what is the sacrifice me, that we want to be given to Yahweh Shai? Every single day. So now let's go to. Bear me just a minute. Bear me just a minute, baby, just a minute.
what for that time? Ecclesiastes 5. It's Ecclesiastes 5. Right? And let's go straight to... If a man commit himself to this word, you've got to commit yourself unto Yahabashai, right? Unto her. So it takes two. You have to commit yourself unto this truth. And a lot of men don't want to do that. How can you call yourself, you're being a servant of Yahabashai, but you're not committing yourself at all? He shall inherit her with them. And his generation. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and his generation. <coughs> Excuse me. That happens sometimes. Bear me just a minute. Generation. Where was I? And his generation shall hold her in possession. So you're going to have a particular generation of Israelites that were going to hold Sophia in possession. Wisdom in possession. You're just going to guide them in that way. As it says in what Isaiah 33 and 6. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of of that time this is what's gonna <laughs> this is what's gonna keep us stable in these times to come right. and bring them just a minute but for at first she will walk with him by crooked ways crooked, crooked ways you know Crooked ways, ways you would never think of. Crooked paths. I'm gonna put you through this test. I'm gonna put you through that test. That's some crooked ways. Put you in different um, scenarios, different situations. And bring fear and dread upon him. Because that's what wisdom needs to do. So you can fear the Lord, so you have I can suffer with you more, so he can give you more understanding. That's that dread. So when you first come to the truth, you may be doing things, that will put that dread upon you. So you can fear him more. And torment him with his discipline. So you'll be tormented with the discipline of Yahweh Shai. So he's going to torment you through what? Through chastisement. Through correction. So you can stay on that right path. With her discipline until she may trust, right? His soul and try him by her laws. So that's why you get put through these particular situations. So you can be trusted of Yahweh Shai. Okay? But that's what the truth is about. Applying, not just. Being a hero, being a doer, applying the words. All right. What good is it if you don't apply it? Verse 17. But at first you will walk with him by crooked ways. Did we go into that? Yeah, we went there. <laughs> Verse 18. Then will she return straight away unto him? So that woman that was testing you, she's going to return unto you by crooked ways. She was just testing you out to see if you were worthy, to see if you were going to leave or fight it through, to see how committed you were to her. But that's the same maybe with wisdom, right? Not, not see how much you're committed between you and this other man, you and Sophia. 
ultimately you and your Habashai. Because wisdom is um, interchangeable with what with your Habashai. Your Habashai is wisdom. All right? And comfort him. That's when you're comforted. Because now you went for them crooked ways. Now you're comforted with what this word. Now you're comforted. As before, you wasn't as comforted. And show him her secrets. That's when the secrets get what expanded onto you. Because you went through what that hard path. You went through them difficult places. Now the secrets are more expanded onto you. Now you knew things that you never knew two years ago. Now you think now you know things that you never knew a month ago. Because you were going through that crowd. Right? Verse 19. But if he go wrong, she will forsake him. Right? She will leave you. Okay? The, the, it's depending on the matter. <laughs> depending on the mercy, because everybody's mercy is different. Right? And give him over to his own ruin. So the moment that you're not striving for your Havisha anymore, and you want to go back into the world, and you want to be a, a nigger, your Havisha will give you over to what? Your own ruin. Everything you were doing back in the world, your Havisha will give you over to that. That's why you got to fear your Havisha. Gain. My faith, I'm being real, my faith is growing. Day by day, my faith is growing for Yahweh Shai. Because there are particular things you do in the truth that you shouldn't be doing, but then what you get 